fine grained adjustments. Fine grained adjustments constantly, and you can be like a fisherman with a fishing pole that you're you're kind of jerking the the hook up and down. It's it's bouncing up and down, and so you start by using that very flexible digital mechanism to tempt in a bunch of users, and then find a way to lock them in. And if it's social media, you don't even have to find a way. Users just lock each other in because they they now they can't agree on where to go next. Right. Uh, and so they're all just stuck there, even though they all hate it. Right. Um, and and once those users are locked in, you're like, okay, well now I can start making life worse for them in order to make life better for someone else. So I can make things better for advertisers or publishers, either by spying on my users or increasing the portion of their feed that is uh, suggested stories. Uh, and then once the users it's, and the publishers, uh, or the users and the publishers and the advertisers are all locked in, then you want to withdraw all the surplus that you can, leaving just enough of a residue that they stay locked in, and give it all back to your shareholders. That's kind of your really fiduciary duty you know, at this point, now that everyone's again. on the hook. You, know, you, 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 you want to you you strip them to the bone. And the problem is that, you know, the difference between a service that is so bad that you want to leave it, but you can't, and a service that's so bad that you're leaving, I shall teach you Right. Um, you know the the uh, you know once once people start to leave the value of the system goes down and so you don't need as much of a, um, a uh, push to go because there's less holding you because the people you were staying to know with are already gone already so it's easier for you to unstick yourself and, and when that happens you know platforms start to um, panic and the, the term of art in the tech cycle for panicking is pivoting and so you know uh, Mark Zuckerberg is like we're going to pivot to a company that will turn you all into a uh, heavily surveilled, no polygon, uh, sexless, legless cartoon characters in a virtual world I stole from a 25-year-old cyberpunk novel. And it can be pretty hard to convince people that the guy who just made the service that they actually liked into something terrible is someone they should follow into something even more implausible. I mean, Threads did better than Metaverse, but it, it remains to be seen whether Threads will be durable at all. Yeah, it almost feels like he's pivoted again from the, from the metaverse. Absolutely. Yeah, I think he has. Maybe to AI. It's so, it's so funny, because every week, uh, you know, I, I, I'm looking at news headlines, and almost every case, I look at it and say, oh yeah, there's some more intensification. Oh yeah, there's some more. It's happening again. Uh, and I suspect, I suspect some of the stories we're talking about this week.
how do you widen those checkpoints? I have. And we talk about being the blacksmith tree. To do that, what's kind of exciting, the exciting bit in the in the dev box that is uh, tricky at the moment is to see how the network effects are being unwound in real time. So you network effects are, you know, the fact that you know, when you've got you know, one person is on a phone network, it's got no value at all, you need somebody else there before it gets valuable, so two people it's more valuable, 10,000 people it's more valuable, still only got millions of people, um, you need to be on that network in order to talk to your family and friends. And what we're seeing now is the unwinding of network effects and seeing how quickly it can actually happen when people look at the right incentives to move away, even though in the case of this thing there's no compelling alternative. And I think that's a really important lesson, and that's what we can do about these, these other checkpoints as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's a wonderful article by Dana Boyd. I'll see if I can dig up and paste a link in here, um, where she talks about how when she was an embedded uh, anthropologist with um, MySpace, how she could she could look at the network structure of MySpace and see that there were people who were very densely connected to other people. So it might not just it might not be they have more connections, but like they were the only way that say two people would connect to each other was through this one person as kind of an important connector node. And she saw how when those people left, even though the total number of users wasn't falling by much, the ability of people to connect to each other was falling. And she predicted that the whole thing would collapse. And uh, MySpace people were very sanguine about it. She was like, no, this is going to happen. And it did happen. You know, network effects are a double-edged sword. People join because they want to be with the people who are there. But they leave when those people leave. That's really a, an interesting point. It's the connections that, that give it the value. Um, do you think that it's also, in a way, it's part of the identification cycle, too, isn't it, Twitter? Uh, it's late stage, though. It's, not, it's step four of identification, where it all falls apart. <laughs> Or something. 